everyone and welcome to blog 61 of Tackle the Feelings Before the Behaviour. This blog is called How to Settle Your Child Without Using the Cried Out Method. And this video was a request from um, a mum that watched my, um, my video on the Cried Out Method. I'm quite an advocate against it. So if you would like to take a look, go onto my channel and have a look at that video. And this is sort of a response to that video in a way saying giving you a few suggestions but as I said to this mum if I had the the secret easy quick fix to settle a child and get them to sleep at night I would be a very very wealthy if not the wealthiest woman in the world so there are no easy quick fixes and sometimes there aren't actually fixes the child just is a terrible sleeper until they grow out of it and that's happened you know I've there, there's one or two situations where I've I've been at a loss. I'm just, oh my gosh, you poor things. That's I'm I'm so sorry, <laughs> because uh, some kids just are notoriously bad at sleeping, and you know you can try everything, and you can and you can feel like a failure, and like other people, their kids are sleeping through the night after three months or a few weeks, and and this just doesn't seem to happen. And the more and more exhausted you get, the more awful this becomes. And difficult life gets and it sometimes it can go on for two years you know so and my sympathies to anyone who really is struggling to to settle and sleep and, and to get your babies to sleep it's it's the hardest thing in the world I think um, but there are some strategies to try and I'm going to list some of them to you the number one thing that I will suggest is that no two children are the same no, what works for one, what worked for one sibling might not work for another. They're going to have different personalities. So you really need to, to tune in to your child first. You need to see what they like, what they need, how long they take to settle, what their fears are, what their little niggles are, how much they need of you, what kinds of things they need from you. That's something I can't give you. You're going to have to, to know for yourself through experience with your child so it's good to figure that out with each individual child but um, babies included babies also have their own unique personalities so the best thing I can say with with older children with babies with settling your child if they're struggling to feel secure and safe at night and to settle down and sleep is that you know the core emotion under here is is fear and it's and it's instinctual fear this is survival anxiety that happens because the babies don't have the brain development to to understand that you're coming back or, or what's going on all they know is that if their needs aren't met if they don't get fed if they don't get warm if they don't get loved they're gonna die and I know that's quite a cross way of saying it but it's the truth and that's in, and we all were like that instinctually they, they scream and they, their cries escalate and escalate and escalate and they won't let up is because they're afraid of dying you know under, underneath it all on an instinctual brain stem level that is the anxiety it's survival anxiety in babies that's why we can do quite a bit of damage with cried out method letting them just cry and cry when when something they need something when they cry they need something and love is is very much something that they need touch and security and to feel safe that, that they really really need that they need that for survival babies who don't receive that don't thrive so they know that instinctually so it's really good to try as much as you can attend to your baby if they are very distressed at night time crying during the night if you've got a partner tag team it's really really tough for single parents and I get that even tougher if there's postnatal depression so I won't go on too much more about that um, the number one thing on my list I've got is feeds so when the daytime feeding when you're breastfeeding whatever make it lively um, or bottle feeding whatever you're choosing to do it's lively at in the day and you have it calm at night maybe you want to associate some calm music calm yourself down really try to bring yourself into a calm state your baby's always going to read off your emotions and and your mood so the best way to calm a baby really is to stay calm try to get some support for yourself if you are struggling with anxiety and exhaustion and all of that if you can't just do your best and use meditation and deep breaths while you're holding them sing singing that vibration all those kinds of things so they 
a lot of people say give your baby a chance to fall asleep on their own from as early as six weeks so instead of sort of rocking and bopping your baby so much hold back a little bit be with your baby and and leave your baby on its back to sleep rather so that they associate sleep time as in their cot that they don't constantly need that from you but that's up to you you know that's something I've read and I wanted to include but um, that really is up to you maybe a little bit of both maybe a little bit of touch but just just feel that one out um, starting a short and simple bedtime routine as early as three months so routine and consistency is going to be your best friend with any child to ease anxiety to try and quell all those fears when they don't have the brain development because all children are anxious because they are dependent and they also don't have the, the ability to process a lot of what's going on especially babies so you want to be consistent so that they start learning routines and know what to expect and when so they also suggest that you start winding down before the routine starts about 30 minutes making play quiet play quiet time and then they say start maybe with a bath and straight after the bath you're putting on the pajamas which I'm sure most of you actually do then it's a story or a lullaby or maybe a calming message or both and just keeping those things that you do with your baby as consistent as possible the time as consistent as possible um, this is something I really believe in is that I think it for the first six months at least that it's really helpful if your baby can sleep in the same room as you I'm not so big on saying co-sleeping because of SIDS and which is sudden and in, incidental death syndrome things happen guys you know if you don't know how to do co-sleeping really safely even when you're doing that things can happen babies are you know are very small and it doesn't take much to suffocate so I always say maybe something right next to the bed maybe you can even reach out and you're right there but um, yeah I wouldn't suggest that co-sleeping so much but again it's up to you you've got to do what's right for your family so um, you know before so after six months you can give your baby a security object and I want to say that a really great idea is if you've got an old dressing gown or old pajamas to maybe make a little cushion or a blanket out of that that smells like you that feels like you soft soft things don't put a toy in the cot before six months because you are going to again risk SIDS so um, a security object like a toy should only be after six months but before that you can get creative with smells and textures especially smells and textures that smell like you a suggestion was to express a bit of breast milk onto a muslin cloth because the breast milk will really smell like you and really be comforting so that was quite a good um, suggestion um, they sort of say um, it is still even though I'm not advocating co-sleeping as such having that cuddle and and close physical time with your baby before bed really lying down with your baby and and sleeping and and really holding them and everything having that cuddle time before and then you might want to put them on their back or maybe you just want to cuddle them to sleep I, I think it's really up to every person and also the, the time but the cuddling helps the child to feel safe helps them to feel secure and loved and and they they will relax they, they need that they need that time with you that closeness they need to hear your heart they need to smell you they need to feel you because those are the senses that they run on so having that cuddle time with them and and trying to make that a part of the routine I would say is really important and something that I really want to highlight here and this is going to help you later on when things like separation anxiety start becoming prominent um, in a certain age group of sort of um, two three four years old is don't try especially I'm talking to more mums than dads here don't try and do everything don't try and take all the roles because you don't trust your husband or you want to be this hero or or it started to set up that dynamic and maybe dad works a lot you really need to try and share the role of comforter you need to any parent or maybe grandparent that is helping you raise the child needs to be able to comfort and calm the child as much as you can you know infants really do want mum more than they want anybody else that will change um, but 
it's really important that you facilitate and help because the baby will sense you feeling anxious about giving them to somebody if you, or, or leaving them with someone and if they cry for you you know maybe you you stand at the door but you allow dad to comfort and do the bedtime routine and you must both keep something really consistent so that the child learns the routine and doesn't need one specific person to do it that this this routine can be done by both parents and maybe if there are other people helping like I said grandparents aunties and uncles older siblings you know it should be that the child can get comforted by other people it's important it really is it's a gift to give them lots of people it also means that you're not going to create this unhealthy dependence that the child needs you and if they can't have you they can't get their needs met because that's not reality so I think it's really important to just to give yourself that space especially mums you know when you're breastfeeding and everything to keep your nutrition up your energy levels are going to be really down you make sure you're eating getting nutrition um, if you're choosing to breastfeed and with the exhaustion you need to get creative sleep when baby sleeps let them choose their routines at first um, so that you're getting sleep you know it's not when they sleep it's that they're sleeping initially and then you work after three months you work on that routine um, and and start bringing that consistency in from the get-go you know really start with maybe there's a song you like to sing or things you say or with security blanket that that you you know you sort of have for them whatever it is um, you know really start bringing that in earlier on um, and then there's also strategies like um, like music white noise um, you know night lights as well uh, sometimes being in a dark room is very frightening for young kids especially so it's really understanding fear and soothing that helping them to feel contained hug them hug and soothe fear hug rock you know if your child is really upset if you're struggling to settle them use all your faculties your whole body and you rock and you use your voice and you want to sing or hum and you want to give that vibration coming from your chest and you want to rock them because in the womb they're constantly being rocked it reminds them to where they felt the safest so there's method to this madness and all people when you're feeling really upset and you're having a cry because you haven't had sleep sit yourself down or hold your partner and you rock each other or you or you give each other a big fat hug lots of physical affection when you when you're so exhausted when you're terrified because being a parent is the most terrifying thing you could do so really take care of yourself as much as possible and just know that every single parent is winging it sometimes there's nothing dreadfully wrong your child is just going to give you fodder for their 21st birthday hmm? yeah sometimes it's always good if, if this is becoming a problem to check out with the doctor just to make sure that there's nothing biological going on that they're not in pain you know teething you're going to get these kinds of things you've just got to work it out that's that's pretty much it there's no real huge solution here so i hope that's been helpful if you have any questions especially about things i've said let me know otherwise good luck bye